Mike Zero, Oscar X Ray, Foxtrot. Mike Zero, Oscar X Ray, Foxtrot, QSL. Mike Zero, Oscar, X-Ray, Foxtrot, returning. Yeah, all copied. Thanks for the five and nine. Uh, you're sort of five and nine peaking, five, nine plus. So, um, but just to double check, uh, my, my call sign is Mike Zero, Oscar, X-Ray, Foxtrot. QSL? Yeah, Mike Zero. M zero OXF returning. Yeah, um, the name is Clint Charlie Lima India November Tango and the QTH is Oxfordshire in the UK. Um, back to you. EI2 EWM M0 OXF returning. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, nice signal from you as well. You're 59 plus now. Very good. And uh, nice to uh, work you, I think, for the first time. So uh, all the best in 7 3. Hi, everyone. So. Um that you are looking at and listening to my uh, ICOM, uh, IC740. Um, I was just about to say I bought this a few weeks ago, but it might have actually been a bit longer than that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I bought it off eBay, um, and I paid £290 for it, So, which I think is a pretty good deal, really. It's in uh, excellent condition. And uh, I was just, I was looking for a sort of cheap rig, really. Um, and I wasn't particularly thinking about the IC740. Um, it was pretty obvious for that sort of money, it was going to have to be something either low power um, or old. Um, this rig is sort of circa 1984-85, so mid-1980s. Uh, the reviews on it are sort of generally pretty good. Um uh, one of the reasons I bought it was because I just wanted to demonstrate that you can set up a station and you don't have to spend thousands of pounds. Um, when I bought the 990, the TS990, I took quite a lot of stick actually for attaching things such as MFJs to it. Um, and uh, because it, it's, uh, well, a lot of people perceive the 990 to be the Rolls Royce of radios and uh, were most put out when I put a, attached one of my MFJs to it. And, um, and I sort of made the point that, well, the antenna itself it only cost me about five quid. So, so um, I just thought that um, it would be nice to um, have a setup that was, as ch you know, th that was a as cheap as possible, and therefore inclusive as uh, 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 to um, more people, I suppose. Um, you know, as someone said to me via the channel, well, not everyone's got deep pockets like you. Well, they don't know. My pockets might not be that deep, uh, for all they know. But um, anyway, so. Here we have a setup that's basically a station for 300 quid. So the IC740 cost me 290 um, and the antenna is about a tenner now. So um, I I'm actually routing the antenna through one of my MFJs, but um, uh, you don't uh, need to do that, of course, because you can run this rig with a resonant antenna. Um, and uh, on 40 metres, my wire isn't resonant, um, but it is resonant on 80 and 160 now. Um, I've made some mods. So... Um, so there you go. Uh, a station for 300 quid is possible. Um, as for the 740 itself, um, it's a good rig. Uh, downsides, the cooling fan is quite noisy, but that may not have always been the case. The audio um, is a bit, little bit muddy at times. <coughs> um, 
it covers 10 to 160 meters, which is great, but it doesn't cover uh, the, so those sort of intermediate frequencies. So you, it doesn't have continuous coverage. So it's not a particularly good uh, uh, receiver for sort of DX, particularly if you're into broadcast because you won't hear anything. Um, the hand bands do kind of correlate with some utility signals, but uh, this isn't really a rig that you're going to spend a lot of time DXing on, unless, of course, you're listening to uh, ham radio. Um, on the upside, it's the IF... Um, uh, shift pa um, pass band tuning it, it works really well so um, you hit, hit the button and you can go from IF to pass band and as you can hear it works really well indeed um, yeah the notch filter works very well um, it's uh, I mean, everything else on it is pretty straightforward. Band selection is via a switch here. As I said, it doesn't have continuous coverage. Nor you can set the noise blanking level and you can set it for normal or wide. AGC uh, is sort of adjustable from fast to slow or off. Uh, 100, 100 watts out with 200 watts coming in. Squelch, tone. Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of all there, really. Um, it's not going to blow you away, but... Um, for less than 300 quid, I think it's uh, it's a bit of a bargain. The audio really is something that I'm not, as I said, I'm not that keen on. Receive audio. But, um, you can, you can make adjustments with the tone with the tone control um, and the uh, pass band tuning uh, if there's uh, adjacent band interference etc so um, overall um, it's a it's a nice rig it's a nice looking rig it's very similar to my r71e kind of in the way that it looks the styling of it around about the same period I suppose um, so uh, everything else is pretty standard so you can sort of tune in 1 kilohertz 100 hertz or 10 hertz steps RIT XIT all that kind of stuff is all is all sort of pretty standard um, and, and I quite like it yeah one thing when I first got it was that the frequency um, readout was definitely off um, but it's got like a, a little calibrator pot on the top so you can tune this to a known free to a known a signal with a known frequency and then um, uh, tune to the correct frequency on the display and then adjust the calibrator which then uh, uh, adjusts the frequency slightly until you get the uh, until you get the the right audio um, so and that does work very well because I was worried that it was going to sort of drift around a lot but it actually doesn't it uh, it when I first got it it was way off so I went through that kind of calibration process and uh, all has been good since then really it doesn't seem to drift very much at all um, I'm just having a, uh, a, a sort of tune through 40. Um, I've just worked India Echo to uh, Echo Whiskey Mike, um, who said I was five and nine with 100 watts. I've got 100 watts uh, uh, going out, uh, TX power. Um, 40 meters was alive earlier. It's a, it's a little bit dead now. So there you go, uh, IC740, um, cheap as chips at 290 quid. And as I said, with a sort of 10 quid's worth of antenna, which is basically just um, wire, um, uh, there's a station for um, for 300 quid. So uh, this is probably, well, for a sort of full power, 100 watts uh, out, it's the, probably the cheapest rig I think I've ever bought. Um, the Zygu G90 was more than that. I think I paid 200 and 25 for that second hand from uh, my friend Nigel uh, G0 CQZ and the uh, there was the little Yesu that I had five watts out um, uh, that was way more than this so yeah it uh, just goes to show that if you sort of tra trawl the internet and, st and just keep looking on eBay eventually you sort of pick up a bargain and so it is possible to um, set up a station 
for a tenth of the cost of something like a 990. Uh, in fact, less than a yeah, less than a tenth of, of, the, of what I paid for the for the 990. Um, you just have to live with the uh, sort of 1980s uh, ergonomics um, and uh, performance, really. But I've got to say, this, this is pretty. Uh, I, I, this is pretty good. Um, sometimes I sort of feel it's a bit deaf, but then uh, switch on one of my other rigs, and um, actually, it's not. So uh, um, it uh, it works very well indeed, um, particularly considering how little I paid for it. Anyway, there you go, the three hundred pound station. Um, if you buy an MFJ second hand, you can pick them up for about hundred quid. It'd be four hundred, but um, uh, just just goes to show that you don't need to spend mega bucks and have very very deep pockets um, to participate in ham radio. Well, I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching and 73.